Okay, thank you. And you see my screen okay? Yep. Yep. <laughs> okay, I'll assume you see my screen okay. Um, you see NRAL, OPI, Energy Information Sharing Platform? Yes. Yeah, okay. Okay, great. All right, uh, good morning and uh, thank you for allowing me to present. Um, I had a um, family issue come up that I had to attend to, so I appreciate that uh, I'm able to talk in this forum. <coughs> so I will be talking about energy information at uh, OpenEI.org. Uh, I clear handle uh, at our appeal. There's some basic information about me and pictures so you can see what I look like. And OPI.org is uh, an information sharing platform built on semantic media wiki. Um, we've spent uh, uh, probably about two years putting that site together. Um, we have uh, data, models, tools, information, um, all accessible through this. And we have followed linked open data standards. Um, and we are in the linked data graph. Um, the brief history of OpenEI. Uh, we have a, uh, let's see here, uh, early 2009 there was a, a governmental memo on open government and transparency and data, and uh, we were about that time in our group at the National Institute Energy Laboratory thinking, hey, it would be great to have a platform that does really good at uh, data sharing, um, collecting information from a crowd, crowdsourced out new, um, and so we built this uh, system up, and it comprises several different uh, technologies, including uh, Drupal, uh, of course, Semantic Media Wiki. Um, we build primarily on the Ubuntu um, Linux platform. We're on the Amazon EQ2 uh, cluster, and uh, we have about 30 servers running OpenAI at the moment. Uh, since then, in 2010, we uh, were able to join the Wings Open Data Diagram, um, case study by Amazon and uh, White House Innovation Gallery for OPI. Um, so here's our team, kind of fun graphic of uh, some of our team members. We have uh, Lower Left, Lindsay uh, Giles, and um, some of our other group members, um, developers, and uh, social media, and people who work on content which is uh, important to what OPI is. Um, the, I won't get too far into this, but a couple of people have uh, taken notice of us and uh, tweeted or blogged or, or uh, released press releases on us. So uh, here's roughly what we are. We strive for uh, Creative Commons Zero licensing. Uh, we have structured wiki content. We have data sets, which is a uh, Drupal area, and that's the sole source author uh, method of getting information crowdsourced. So once the data set is uploaded, another user can't change it, as opposed to our recent side where another user can't change it. Um, we have Virtuoso running on the back end. Um, we have a uh, Maybe section that is, uh, will be launched in the coming weeks. Uh, and we have an app section where we uh, go to uh, foster building apps based off uh, web services. Uh, probably uh, in the conference are familiar with the special app uh, methods. And then we also have a, a Sparkle method of uh, Sparkle endpoint method of using that information. For the you know, uh, blog website, it's just a uh, front end and a database. And uh, a number of places on OPI are formed from Unipedia, which is the Wikipedia branch of um, uh, structured data content. that tries to pull structured data out of Wikipedia and provide it uh, via Sparkle endpoint. So we use that on some pages. We connect with other websites, such as uh, Regal.info, which is also another energy platform. And there's the link of the data graph, um, which has been growing. And that central node, if you haven't seen it before, that central node is DDQDA, which 
like I was saying, uh, full structured information to go to CBS. Uh, a lot of uh, references on OpenAI you know, will say uh, we are this page is saying as Wikipedia as currently, and that way we know that we're talking about the same Paris, Paris France, and not Paris Texas. Um, so here's an example of one of our uh, pages on India. And with the energy focus that we have, we say, yeah, tell us all we know about India or a particular state in the United States or any other country in the world. And so what we can do is pull back from our data section, which has been loaded in through Drupal and then eventually converted into linked open data. Um, basically, RDF is uh, presentable to the world. And uh, you know, we have a number of tools that users have entered in. Uh, I think we're up at 1,500 plus uh, entries on tools and models and resources that people have added. Um, we have maps uh, from different sources. Uh, right now, primarily NREL, GIS maps. So, so we can do a lot of interesting things with methods when you work in that space. Uh, we heavily rely on uh, app queries and Spark will make these pages more interesting and, and total information from around the web. Here's an example of our Colorado Energy Resources page and we're able to pull stats and different data sets, I guess, thing. Uh, this is what it looks like for the humans. Um, and of course, uh, it's great to have all this information browser by machine. So, uh, you probably see this sort of view, and this is what it looks like the machine for Colorado page. Um, we do, uh, yeah, since we started our, you know, around 2008, 2009, we started building apps and we just and saying, oh, this is fun, but we really didn't have the data platform. So now that we uh, feel like we have a solid data platform for energy data, we're now able to build apps on it. Uh, and feature apps across the web. So this is actually kind of a fun case using Simile and Divit, and, uh, and it's pulling data from special apps on OpenAI's Net Video G installation. So it allows people to quickly say, uh, yeah, I'm interested in Solar, what kind of apps out in the real world uh, can you show me about Solar? And then you just go directly to this. I'll give a little bit of a demo. Uh, after the presentation. Here's uh, energy data sets, which again, this is running Drupal, and roughly modeled after the data.gov metadata. And then we also realized the gap between uh, what the average developer do about uh, web services and the what web services we are offering. So we are offering you know, app queries that can format JSON and XML and all these um, very different uses of the data. And we're also offering Sparkle. But since Sparkle came out of the W3C recommendation in 2008, it really hasn't been picked up by every developer in the world because primarily JSON and RESTful services. So we said, well, we're going to build a layer on top of uh, app and Sparkle query that will allow the average web developer um, to you know use Yahoo Pipes or use jQuery, whatever to access our information. So in this case, we have um, instead of information that is um, professionally vetted by uh, the group at North Carolina State University that desire you to that work. Um, so we pull in their data by XML. Uh, and in the last year, uh, they've actually been coming to OpenAI to put that information into the structured forms. Uh, and then we were able to build this uh, API web service on top of that. So here I'm querying for incentives in Colorado that are uh, local transportation and, uh, and the federal state level. Uh, Issues. So, uh, here's just a general, if you're interested in OPI, we have some ways to get involved. Um, and 
Okay. Uh, these are rough community statistics. Um, as you know, with semantic via wiki, um, that structured content is available, and one of the challenges we're trying to overcome is helping people to know it's available. Um, going straight from the page, um, you know, you can, if you know semantic video, you can say, I'll click on browse property, or I'll click on this, or I'll write the query. Um, and we are working to uh, pretty sure that gap and there are probably better methods that we um, haven't uh, thought of that the community has already built in. So we're, we're uh, open to suggestions on that. But, um, we do have about 56,000 pages on that wiki. Uh, we get about a million page views in a year. And kind of a fun uh, statistic that I don't have listed on this slide is we started looking at uh, queries to Sparkle traffic um, to our Sparkle endpoint, and we probably have about 12 million of those a year. So some of those are crawlers, some of those are apps that we've built, and, um, and we do have apps that are out in the wild also that are just queries uh, the Sparkle endpoint. Okay, and here's a picture of some of the <coughs> That have been developed. Uh, there was a Nashicon AKA uh, hackathon event that came out of sponsor that we threw together several different uh, web services, uh, including one from OpenAI uh, that connected me with you and Baldwin. And let's see, I can use my mouse here. The top left is a uh, system advisor model, so it's called, and it helps you determine solar wind uh, capability. Should I put uh, uh, solar panels on my roof? What would be the payoff? And it's able to query the web service and actually check for this structure of utility that they have on OpenAI. Uh, and I'll show that uh, in demo afterwards uh, on the web. And uh, this desire widget, um, this also queries OPI and um, check instead in a very friendly, simple way. You could say, I'm not a car, I'm a homeowner, and there are 75 minutes available to me. If I'm interested, I can do those now or choose another state. This is the silly right there, and I'll go into that with the web and mall. So. Okay. So I think I'm just going to get on time. Uh, can I do a verification of that? I probably have 15, 20 minutes. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. Great. Let me switch over. You should be able to see Chrome now. Is that true? The front page of OPI? Yep. Yeah. Okay, great. Right. I just want to make sure before I move on. Okay, so this is OPI's front page. Um, and and we're really excited to be using semantic video wiki. Um, so many people ask us, oh, what's the difference between you and Wikipedia? Um, aren't you just the same? And we say, well, no, we really have a focus on crowdsourced structured data. Um, so probably one of the uh, more successful areas on OPI where we uh, opened up crowdsourcing as an option is the utility rate database. Um, so a quick intro to utility rates. Um, if your utility company says I'm going to charge you nine cents a kilowatt hour, um, that that can be modeled on a utility rate. Uh, and as some of you may know, um, in in California. Utility rates are often very complex. Um, you might have electricity that's changing cost every hour, and depending on how much you're using, the cost may go up. Um, so it's really a complex um, model that we said, well, we need a form to uh, model all this information. So what we said was, okay, well, uh, we think this is a good model for crowdsourcing. And we got uh, interns and we created this form. So, so this is a um, this is a semantic media with the 
uh, usage, but it's uh, a different UI on top of it. So, say yeah, I am logged in, I'll go and say edit, and this allows me to, for a for complex uh, commercial utility rate, say specifically to what electricity costs at a certain time of day and then save that. Uh, so the advantages <coughs> are uh, simple inputs for utility companies or interns who are looking at the utility rates. Uh, this case you can say, okay, well, this range is actually um, period six, which is, you know, cost um, 18 cents per kilowatt hour the first time. Um, then save the revision, you can, um, you know, fill out other areas that it's more electricity cost, save the revision, and, um, and there you have the data. And of course, nice that uh, the fact that we fill out the form is available uh, via web service. So we built the web service on top of um, app where you can make it a little bit easier for developers to integrate and at Flash services here. And so you can query on utility companies in the United States, you can query on utility rates, and uh, one of the reasons I say this is unsuccessful is the number of rates of an input. So we had about um, 500 rates from uh, our own sweat equity, I guess you call it, and then there was a grant that was awarded to you further fill out the database. So we can see that uh, of the companies, utility companies in the US, we have a decent amount of coverage. It's probably 80% of, um, of consumer electric so we're, we're gaining a lot of value from being able to have this structured um, easy input model and then other applications can draw on our data and we are uh, spoken with groups like Spies and, and uh, some internal application developers who are looking at using this data. So back here. So, Show the India page, but um, we have a way of selecting any country and saying what are the energy resources of that country, uh, or state, or congressional district, or county, city, etc. <coughs> so a lot of the initial months of OPI was bought uh, populating these pages and saying this city is part of this state and um, taking various data sets and and pushing it out to multiple pages. So now the benefit is um, actually this weekend there's a uh, hackathon event called the Cleanway Hackathon, and um, students from UC Berkeley will be um, integrating various energy web services to uh, try to create some interesting applications. And uh, so we'll be sending somebody out there to do that, um, having this model and the energy data already populated makes it a lot easier for folks to be able to say, okay, I just want to query on this or that. The we have had uh, a lot of uh, success using simulated visits directly with um Magic Media Wiki. So uh, because um, I think a lot of you are probably technically minded um, I'll show the there it is. Okay, so here's the query that's uh, populating this simulated um, And you can see it's pretty simple. Just give me a uh, concept map, which we define as a certain number of categories on the internet that media would use. Give me back to the various fields and what is the user interface, um, a little bit about the app, and then, and then voila, we just have a, um, an app browser. And we can say, okay, tell me more about this particular app, go to it, edit the entry, we can go straight to it. Um, and that's been uh, something we've been able to use in other applications here. So tell me about. Um, that have worked in a certain country. 
um, for renewable energy. Um, tell me about the you know, different areas that you can say are kind of interested in biomass, uh, energy, fuel, and, and then you can see, you know, in a large way, this is solid stream. See what people adapt to your situation that would be helpful. So maybe at this point would be a good time to ask questions because let me know the audience I want to make sure that I'm now we have to go outside here. If there's anything they say, how did you do this or why didn't you do that? I'd be interested to hear from the audience. Okay. Questions. Any Questions. Um, how many triples do they have in their data store? Did you hear that? I did. I could hear it. Okay. It's how many triples did you have in your data store? Uh -huh. All right. Down to the right. Let's see here. Not knowing. Right off with that. Um, let me do a quick. Um, for each second. All right. We'll take a second to come back, but we'll get a, a live read out here. Conversions. I, I mean, how, uh, the ones you convert a bunch of them. So how many do you, could, do you keep online? Can I just go here to ask? Oh, okay. That's probably easier. How many? How much of that are you keeping online? Ah, um, everything that we convert, we keep online and uh, accessible via the Sparkle endpoint. Um, so we have, a, as you can see, the, the number of data sets we convert are probably fifteen or twenty. How many uh, uh, rows are available? How many triples are available to, us, to your Sparkle query? How many triples? So it'd be the sum of some of all these sites. I think we're Everyone? probably in the 15 to 20 million triples. Okay, thanks. More questions? Yeah. Yeah. What, what made you choose the Drupal for the apps uh, for the data set section? Uh, why Drupal? Why Why did you choose Drupal? Why did we choose Drupal? Um, good question. All right. So uh, we have a need for a uh, a sole source. Uh, Kind of model. So, where a uh, media wiki functions as well as a collaborative input model, we really want to be able to say, this is my data set and it's never going to change. And so, uh, the other piece was we wanted a little bit more workflow uh, capability. So, we said, hey, we'll take uh, you know, a newly entered data set, we're going to send emails out. And Tell these people where to do it. Um, a few years ago. So, so again, maybe some great modules available now. Um, 
to media wiki and semantic media wiki, but those were our primary uh, goals and choosing Drupal. And we can show the mock system that had media wiki as the master and Drupal as the place, uh, so that it'd be a more seamless experience between the two systems. Okay. Yeah, the reason I asked is that on the surface, it could nothing, uh, they don't seem uh, uh, much that uh, media wiki could, uh, semantic media wiki could not do. So uh, uh, I was interested in the, the, the reason I worked for that. And Jesse, if you can, uh, you can repeat that question. Oh, he was just, uh, <coughs> Mentioning that it didn't, see, he didn't see a lot on the surface that you couldn't do natively with it in Semantic Media Wiki. But that, mm -hmm. the workflow uh, is a good reason to to get to, to use that. Yeah. He thought the sure. workflow is a good reason uh, that you use true power. Yes. Sure. Okay. Okay. Well, thanks. Thanks for that feedback. Yeah. There are there are pieces where we and of course output as. Uh, RDFXML would be completely doable. So we, uh, we did throw in some different voting options and uh, <coughs> things like that. But yeah, I think I think in a lot of cases you can adapt in any technology to it. Um, you know, with, with the right amount of knowledge and uh, expertise. So yeah, I think it's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for that feedback. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Thank you very much, Ryan. Okay, thank you. Yeah.